So we're here at PMC Studio London, one of three PMC studios across the world. We created each of these spaces to be uh, Dolby Atmos enabled mix suites so that we could use them as a demonstration space, a training space, but they're also used to produce uh, some new albums out today. Up front in the room we've got three PMC MB3 XBD full active models. The subwoofers at the front are four PMC sub twos uh, doing the LFE channel. And then hidden behind the fabric in the walls of the room are eight PMC CI65 models doing the surround channels. Overhead is six PMC uh, CI45s. So the room is an 1116, 11 channels uh, of fronts and surrounds in this plane. Uh, one LFE channel, although it's split between four subwoofers. And then six is the overheads doing the height channels. Dolby Atmos is a really exciting new way for consumers to hear and experience music in a completely different way. Basically, Dolby Atmos is a musical surround system that immerses the listener in the middle of a listening space. And for some tracks, that means a lot of the audio moving around you, if the content suits that. But for some tracks, the audio can be completely static, but still immersive. So we have a live recording of an orchestra, which is an extraordinary experience because you are sitting where the conductor would stand. And I don't think, I'd never experienced that before. I don't know whether you have. But when you do experience it, it's a completely different way to hear music. Dolby Atmos differs from traditional 5.1, 7.1 surround systems because from the mix engineer's perspective, the way in which you can mix into it is much more intuitive. You can place things not just in discrete speakers, but in positions around the room. So I can decide that a sound is coming from here. And then Dolby Atmos works out in this room that it's coming from here, but then if it scales up into a cinema with hundreds of speakers in it, it works out where here is in that room. That differs from a traditional surround sound format in, because in a traditional surround sound format, you have discrete speakers. So in 5.1, you have to decide that this, the, the sound is coming from that speaker. So it, and it, so it doesn't scale in the same way. Mixing in Dolby Atmos is a completely new and exciting experience. I wish, I wish I'd set up a GoPro camera above the mixing position here when I first started because you would just see me smiling and laughing. It is so enjoyable. The way in which they've designed the user interface is extremely creative and extremely useful and easy to use for the composer and the producer and the mix engineer. So it allows you to be very creative from the very early stages of making music. So there are studios here in London, in LA and New York, where people are composing music, not through stereo speakers, through a Dolby Atmos system. So that allows them at the, at the conceptualization point to really start to think about creating an experience for the user. Suddenly you're given a space where you can spread audio all around you. Instead of using equalization and compression, you can use space. And that to a mix engineer is revolutionary. That's a, that's a whole new thing. And that space, you know with Dolby Atmos, you're confident that that space will translate into any other space that someone is listening to the music in. So with previous surround sound systems, that wasn't always the case. One of the other huge advantages for me of the Dolby Atmos format is it reintroduces something we call dynamic range. Dynamic range is the ability to go from very quiet to very loud or somewhere in between as a tool for emotional or, or musical impact. It's something that certainly over the past decade in stereo mixing, we've lost because uh, there's a tendency in stereo mixing to make things as loud as possible. And there is a benefit to that because it's quite exciting, but there's also, it removes the wonderful ebb and flow of dynamic range. The use of dynamic range can be really prevalent in hip hop, rock, uh, pop, all sorts of genres. It's not just classical music. And you can take people on a journey in a different way because of that use of dynamic range. You can take them into a space where you leave them on the edge waiting for more because you're pulling the volume down and then suddenly you introduce dynamic range. And if you think about it, when you go to see a band these days, if you go and see a rock band or a pop band, there is dynamic range there. It's just a shame in stereo mixes these days, we've kind of lost that. And one of the positives of working or mixing in Dolby Atmos is when you mix in Dolby Atmos, you have dynamic range you can use that stereo downfold of that mix and that still has dynamic range. You're getting high fidelity with dynamic range 
in Atmos and in stereo. Obviously a majority of people will listen to Atmos music through headphones and there is a binaural or spatial audio experience for that. And again, as I said before, mixes that are in done in Dolby Atmos tend to have a different type of space, a more open space about them when they when they downfold into into stereo. So there's the, it will be a a better experience for the listener. Plus, it also has dynamic range, as I mentioned before. I think from a consumer perspective, the most exciting thing will be these new sound bars that are coming out and the car experience. I've heard Dolby Atmos in a Tesla and it is, it's extraordinary. And that's, a, again, a huge benefit for the listener because you, you have this content, you're in a static place. It's very easy for the car manufacturers to get it to sound great and the consumer will be able to listen to music in a completely different way, in a way that I'm hearing it in this room. However, the ultimate Dolby Atmos listening experience is in a room like this, where there are physically speakers around you, 714, 1116, whatever it might be. That is where you blow people away. That's a completely different experience. That's a much better and more exciting experience than any of the others.